What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the A-Ray Show. It's your boy A-Ray here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the top mistakes dividend growth investors make in their portfolios, their investing strategy, and anything related to dividend growth investing. And to be honest, I've made my fair share of mistakes. This is kind of like a trial phase where I'm just trying out new things, and I've definitely made a tons of mistakes that I wish I hadn't. But you know what? We're going to go through some of my experiences and some of the mistakes that I've done, so that way you guys don't make the same mistakes. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So we're going to start off pretty strong here. So in my opinion, the biggest mistake you can make as a dividend growth investor is chasing dividend yields. And this is an article written by this guy right over here, John Mason. So shout out to my buddy John Mason for this article. But the whole premise or the whole ideology of his reasons for saying that chasing dividend yields are bad is because they give so much uncertainty and that these companies are basically not going to be able to sustain their high dividend yields. And to a certain extent, he's kind of right. And I'm going to kind of show you guys some examples of that later on. But what he's basically saying in this whole article is just one thing, and that's to be careful when chasing these dividend yields. And later on in the article, he says this right here, investors cannot just buy stocks because they provide a high dividend yield. And there's nothing more true than that. As a dividend growth investor, you want to look at more things than just dividend yield. You want to look at things such as financials, the business model, the vision, and pretty much anything like that. And the reason why is because a lot of times when a company has a high dividend yield, it's not sustainable. A lot of times these companies end up going bankrupt over a long time or they end up cutting their dividends. And I'll show you guys some examples of that. All right, so this is a classic example of a company that had a high dividend yield, but it was unsustainable. And that's GE or General Electric Company. And you can see that they start off pretty well. And this is a general trend that you want to see out of a dividend growth company. You want to see a company that grows their dividend year after year. And that's exactly what GE did. But right here was the 2008-2009 recession, and GE was unable to keep paying that dividend, and in fact, they actually had to cut it. And that's a big red flag right here. Generally, out of a good company, through recessions, they're still able to grow their dividends, but GE was unable to do that, which just proves that they had some sort of element that proved that they were unsustainable with their dividend and with their dividend yield. And you can see they kind of just started off again. But because they had some lack of fundamentals and things that they had to worry about, it was cut again. And now it's only down to one penny, which just proves that high dividend yields are unsustainable for certain companies. And let's take a look at their 20 year chart. So you can see that GE started around $50 almost. And now currently today, it's only worth about 11, 10, 11 dollars, right? So as this company grew their dividends, their stock price was depreciating over time. So not only were they unable to keep their dividend yield and how high it used to be but their share price was going down so as an investor if you had invested back here yeah you would have done well while the dividend was increasing but the share price was going down and now the dividend is cut down to a penny per share which is something that will probably take years on years on years just to get your money back which is kind of sad but that's the reality when you look past other things such as fundamentals business model and things like that. When you just look at the dividend yield, this can easily happen to any company, especially if you don't look at their financials properly. So just to be clear, if you're investing to a company like GE or you're investing to GE itself, I'm not trying to roast you or anything like that. I just want to make it evident that it's very important to look at things past the high dividend yield. So let's take a look at this right here. So in 2018, they had a high dividend yield of about almost 7%, which is really big, right? But let's say you saw that, oh shoot, a 7% dividend yield, might as well start investing now. Well, if you take a look now, it's only about a 0.36%. So there's definitely a high dramatic drop off in the dividend yield. And a lot of these yields are unsustainable at the time. So it's very important to look past just the high dividend yield. Look at things such as their financials, their vision, their business model. And I'm just going to keep repeating these things over and over again, just because it's really important to look just past the dividend yield. So that last example of GE was a little bit dramatic, but there are companies that do end up going bankrupt after paying a high dividend yield. But nonetheless, let's get into this one right here, ExxonMobil. And this one's kind of in the middle. So as you can see, they're growing their dividend year after year. And this is the type of trend that you want to see. And to be honest, it's probably still sustainable for them, even in the long term. But with that being said, there's something that's important to know about a company like ExxonMobil. Although their dividend yield is super high and they're growing their dividend year after year, their share price isn't growing. And that's a lot of times a trend that you're going to see with these companies that have a high dividend yield. They have a high share price, but it does end up decreasing over time. So you can see it's about $100 and now currently it's around $45, $46. So the reason for that is because a lot of times a company that has a high dividend yield, 
they tend to stagnate a lot or even in certain cases decrease over time. So companies like ExxonMobil, other oil companies, T-Mobile, those are just some good examples right there. But you know, it's not a bad investment. It kind of depends where you are. And this one kind of leads me to my next thing or next mistake as a dividend growth investor to make. And so that second mistake is not identifying your time horizon. And what I mean by time horizon is the time that you're looking to retire. So for example, if you have 40, 50 years ahead of you before you want to retire, then you kind of want to have a low dividend yield just because the name of the game is dividend growth investing. You're not only growing your investment, but you're also growing the amount of dividends that you get per share. So a lot of times a company like Apple will have a small dividend yield, but by the time the company tends to mature, it'll have a higher dividend yield. And that's kind of what you want to do. You want to grow with your dividend. For example, like I said, Apple is about not even 1%. You want that to be about 5 or 6% by the time you retire. And the same thing is going to be the case if you want a smaller time horizon. So let's say you're going to retire in 5 to 10 years. Then a company like ExxonMobil is not going to be bad. They're going to have a nice passive income so that you can live off of it, right? So it all kind of depends where you are in life. So a lot of people are fixated on having a high dividend yield even if their time horizon is kind of far out. And that's a mistake that I had in the beginning. I remember investing into companies like AT&T, even though that their yield is 6 to 7%. And my time horizon is not for another 20 to 30 years before I retire, right? So that's a mistake that I had in the beginning, just kind of fix being too fixated on that dividend yield and not appropriately adjusting to my time horizon. And there's going to be a trade-off with dividend yield and the performance. As you can see, my yield is only about 2.2%, which isn't anything crazy, but by the time I retire, this number is going to be a lot higher. And that's the way I look at it. So if we look at my performance, this number is going to be a lot higher than it would be if I was just chasing dividend yields, right? 137% over the last five years without dividends reinvested is a pretty big number, right? So it's really important to get a good mix of a dividend yield and their time horizon and the performance just to kind of get a good idea where you want to be in the future. And I'll give you guys another look at my portfolio to kind of understand what I mean by that a little bit better. So you can see that my tech sector is allocated to about 22%. And this is the biggest part of my portfolio. And this is actually the lowest it is in dividend yield as well. And then telecom right here is at 6%. And this is the highest amount of dividend yield that's coming from my telecom sector. So let's take a look at my tech sector and see what I mean by this. So you can see the performance is over 300%, which is huge in just the last five years. But the trade-off is the dividend yield is only 0.847%. But the reason why is a lot of these companies, Apple, Microsoft, Visa, they have a low dividend yield, but their growth rate is phenomenal. And the amount of dividends that they have right now is pretty low. But these companies are growing their dividend yield a lot faster than some of the more mature companies. So there's always going to be a trade-off with these companies. Right now, I'm looking to build my portfolio and grow it over time. So that's why I'm chasing uh, all these companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Visa, right? But I do have like a few mixed in here like Texas Instruments and Cisco, which have nice dividend yields. So it's all about mix and kind of understanding where you are on your time horizon and you're looking to retire and just kind of moving forward from there. So you can see that I'm kind of just giving up my dividend yield for the performance because in the long term this will help grow how much money I have in my portfolio but the dividends won't be there so that's kind of why you got to mix it in and it really does matter where you are in life so if I was closer to retirement I'd be wanting to bump up these in telecom and more specifically companies like AT&T and Verizon because these ones have the highest dividend in my portfolio so you can see that the performance is only about 46.47 percent but the yield is 4.7 percent which is huge right and to be honest, a lot of this growth is not coming from Verizon or AT&T. It's coming from Disney and Qualcomm. And these two actually have a uh, low dividend, Disney had cut it. But that's beside the point. My main point right here is just to show that dividend yield is not something that you want to look for unless you're closer to retirement. And you kind of want to understand your time horizon better. So like I said, it really just matters where you are in life. If you should be chasing a dividend yield, should be having more dividends coming in, more passive income, and that's if you're closer to retirement. Or if you have 30 to 40 years like I do, where you just wanna be able to grow your portfolio and grow your dividends over time. So this next mistake is a mistake that I'm personally working on right now, and it's a mistake that I had in the past, and that's to invest into too many companies. And let me give you a quick reason why that's a bad idea. So let's say you invest into 100 companies, but you only invest about $50 every single week. You're only allocating about 50 cents to each company, so, that's going to be bad because let's say there's a huge dip in 
half of the companies, right? You're missing out on every single one of the dips because you have too many companies to invest into. And you're going to miss out on a lot of growth and appreciation. You're going to miss out on a lot of compounding growth to the dividends. And you're basically just missing out on all of that. You basically have like a mini ETF. And that's something to be wary of. It's better to have maybe 30 to 40 good companies than 100 okay companies. And that's something that I'm working on myself. You can see I have about 42 holdings. I remember when I first started, I was like, yo, I like this company, this company, this company. But I'm kind of narrowing it down and I'm up to about 42. There's two or three companies I'm keeping a close eye on that I might remove, but I'm sitting at a pretty okay spot. But like I said, something that I've been dealing with and a lot of dividend growth investors also make this mistake just because there's so many good companies out there, but there's only a certain amount of elite companies out there. So it's just good to know that kind of just narrow it down and know what companies are going to be good, which ones make sense for your portfolio and your time horizon and kind of just nail it down from there. So I found this article on Seeking Alpha and I'll leave the links in the description for every single of the articles I use in the video so you guys can check it out for yourself. But pretty much this paragraph, the author is just saying that there's no difference of having 100 stocks than it is to own an ETF. They're pretty much both going to track the performance of the market and do the same thing. Except this way you're minimizing your commissions and saving thousands of precious hours of research. So in a way, you're technically saving time and money working on just, you know, investing into an ETF than it is for 100 companies. And like I said before, it's better to own, you know, 20 to 50 really good stocks than it is to own 100 OK stocks. So that's pretty much it for this video. There are a lot of other small mistakes that dividend growth investors can make. So maybe I'll do a part two one day. But for now, let me just give you guys a quick summary of all the things that dividend growth investors should be careful of or mistakes that they should avoid. So number one, don't be chasing these high dividend yields. A lot of these companies can either go bankrupt or cut the dividend easily and you know it could just leave you holding a bag or you know you could lose a lot of money. Also, don't just invest into a company because they have a high dividend yield. Look at their financials, look at their business model, their plan and their vision. So that's one thing to be careful of. Number two, identify your time horizon. Just know that you know investing into a company that has a low dividend yield will pan out for you if they have a high compound rate of growing their dividends over time. Or if you're close to retirement, then yeah, you can allocate your companies differently. You can go for companies such as ExxonMobil, AT&T, Verizon, companies like that. And number three, don't over diversify. Don't get like a thousand stocks. You know what I mean? Just kind of fixate yourself on a certain amount of good stocks and move on from there. With that being said, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for today. And one other thing I like to mention is if you did make any mistakes or you're on the verge of making any mistakes like this, don't even worry about it. Dividend growth investing is a long term strategy. So we have tons of time to fix mistakes and just kind of learn and grow at the same time. And, you know, like I said before, these are all mistakes that I've done personally. So, you know what? We're just going to grow together as a community, get these mistakes out of the way and just learn and grow from there. By the way, guys, we just hit 50 subscribers, so I really appreciate all you guys that subscribe to my channel. You know, leave a comment that says top 50. You guys were part of the top 50 subscribers that were on my channel. I appreciate you guys. Hella, you guys don't even know how much. It really means a lot to me. And if you guys got any value out of this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And guys, remember, everybody eats, and peace out.